Hi, I'm Bonnie Saratori with Spiritual Acceleration, and I want to share a little info about the second chakra and cording. We want to deal with cords, what that's all about, okay? So in that second chakra, that's where we hold all of our carryover from past lives, emotions. It's also where we create more energy of emotions in this lifetime. So that second chakra, which is located just beneath the navel, about two inches beneath the navel in your body, it's an energy center, okay, that second chakra. So the energy in there really does have to do with all kinds of emotions. So if you think about your life and you think about what you've experienced, when you think about all the emotions that you have been having, experiencing, emotions that you seem to can't get through or let go of or to clear or to heal, that's in that second chakra area, okay? So when we think about that energy, it, it's also the second chakra also connects to the sexual energy, okay? So when we think about intimacy, sexuality, the experiences of having uh, sexual experiences, those traumas, those and en whatever we got running with our sexuality, that's in that second chakra as well, okay? So you have all this pain in there because that, that's what it holds. It's not holding love and light, all right? The second chakra is holding the traumas, the crisis. It's, it's holding the, the painful experiences, the hurtful experiences carried over from past lives as well as this lifetime, okay? Then when we think about cords, energetic cords, okay? It's very natural for us to cord into one another. It's something we've been doing probably since we were humans, is cording in. Now, different chakras, cording in is for different reasons. Now, the second chakra, when you're in relationship, people do cord into that second chakra. In relationship, an intimate relationship, that's that sexual energy, that sexual cord that's coming you know, from each person into that second chakra, okay? So the cording there especially when you're, you know, having an, a new experience, when you're all excited and, you know, found your lo new love or whatever, found love, and all that intensity of the sexuality, those cords are pretty strong okay? in that, that second chakra area, you're cording into one another. And it does have to do with like, you're feeling like so much love or so much sexuality. Okay. You know how you, you like when you're really with someone and you're, your sexuality is just like alive. The intensity is alive. So you got all this energy happening between you. Okay? It's also where we cord in emotionally. Like, for example, when we feel broken or shattered or like poor me, the victim, okay, those kinds of emotions, we can cord into one another, partly because we want to be taken care of. We want someone to fix us. We want someone to save us. We want someone you know, to be there for us, you know, to you know, protect us and make us feel better, okay? Um, so the courting, you know, it, those kinds of cords are not really healthy, but ultimately we really don't want to be courting one another. What we really want is we want to open the heart and, and experience the frequency of love, unconditional love, as well as that intimate love that we have for one another, but we want to feel it in the heart chakra, okay? So when we have cords coming into that second chakra, Coming into us, coming from others. Now, keep in mind, we're going to go both ways. But right now, let's just say we got cords coming in, you know, from friends or family or children or whoever. There's a, a like the energy can be like a neediness, and and unfortunately, that energy can drain us when someone cords in, hooks in. You know, it can start taking our life force. We feel drained sometimes when people. Are, are, are talking a lot. Like, and maybe you've had this experience where you're around people. When you leave, you feel like, oh my word, I just feel like I'm just so drained. Okay. So what's happening, someone could be actually talking and seemingly it's like, how would you ever think they're courting into you? Okay. But what happens like when you're done, you feel like, oh, what happened? Okay. But what's happening is people that are courting into that second chakra, there's a needing. I want you to see me, look at me, hear me, know me, recognize me, 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 okay? So we hook in with those cords and we're trying to get attention. We're extracting your energy, thinking we're getting your attention. We want your recognition. We, we want you to see us, okay? So 
those kinds of energy cords are very draining and they're not very healthy and they're, they're actually inappropriate, but people don't realize that they're cording. Here's the thing about that. For example, let's just say you're around somebody. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Hanging, like for example, when I go on and people are asking questions, okay? People want me to do something. They want me to help them. They want me to save them. They want me to change their experience in some way, okay? So there's a difference between recognizing that you want something from someone and holding your own energy inside and not going at them and cording in, hooking into them, as opposed to just saying it straight up, I want your help, okay? There's a difference between I want your help and saying things like, this is happening to me, can you do something, whatever, okay? So there's a, it's an emotional feeling, this is what causes the courting. When you have an emotional feeling, for example, we'll come back to just me, someone wants me to help them, someone wants me to save them, someone thinks I'm gonna be able to you know, change their lives or whatever, and that it's an emotion. That emotion is what sends the cord out. Okay, now remember, cords are kind of hidden. There's an agenda in your cording. Okay, but you're not looking at it, you're not owning it, you're not facing it. And when you do that, then you cord into people and you're trying to suck off their energy. You're trying to pull their energy. Okay. You want them to do something for you, protect you, save you, change it, whatever. This is true for anyone. And I'm just using me as an example because it happens all the time. All the time. People want help. I get it. The whole world wants help. Okay, but we don't have to cord into each other to get help. Okay, usually it's better to just say straight up, look, I want you to save me. Okay, <laughs> at least when we say that, we're owning it. And when we own it, we're not cording. It's when we don't own something that we start to cord into one another. It's the hidden, the hidden agenda, the hidden need, the hidden want, the hidden desire, hiding it. Okay, because most people don't feel it's okay to ask for what you want. So that's a big one. You know, it's like we will cord in because we can't be clear and, and honest and clear and upfront telling the truth saying, this is what I want because we have all these beliefs that there's something wrong with us. We don't deserve, we're not enough. We've been victims, poor me. So we do the courting dance all the time. Okay. And for those of you who really want to wake up and stop doing that courting dance and, you know, you don't want people courting into you, nor do you really want to be courting in to someone else. It's not appropriate. Okay. You mess each other up. People are affected when people start courting into that second chakra and start pulling, pulling, pulling and draining energy. Look at me, save me, do something. That second chakra gets a little wonky. Okay. And it can, it can get a little exhausted and all that intense energy is like, you know, save me, save me, save me. It's like, you know, then what happens is like, we kind of like disengage and, you know, push those cords out. But, you know, it's like the courting thing happens all the time. It's like I said, there's a naturalness about it. There's something kind of normal about it, or there used to be. So, you know, now that we were moving into the new paradigm, the frequency and energy of the new paradigm is no longer about that kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's like, as we move into the new paradigm, it's really about opening the heart and sharing the gift of who we are, absent many more uh, woundings, misperceptions, conclusions, where we have all these beliefs that there's something wrong with us, or that we're not loved, we're not lovable, okay, or that we'll never be loved, or we're forsaken. Those kinds of intensities with the new paradigm, it's bringing, like right now, the time period is to bring everything to the surface, which is what's happening from your subconscious, all right? So as it's coming up, we clear it much easier. So this whole dance that we're doing of courting into one another, that's not going to be the way of the new paradigm, okay? So for example, when the heart is more open, we're more able to speak our truth, what we really need, what we really want, what we desire, okay? We're sharing more of the gift of who we are. When we're more clear, there's no need to cord. Like I said, the cord is kind of sneaky. It's devious. It's hidden. Okay, we don't want people to know. Oh, I want from you, so I'm going to cord into you because I can't speak my truth. 
So that's the things that will be shifting and changing in the new paradigm. We won't be living that kind of experience. It'll be more heartfelt where we're not afraid. Oh, yeah, Bonnie, can you help me? Like, just like that. I need, I need help. Can you just, I need this. I want that. Even though, you know, I want you to just give it to me. <laughs> okay. I don't want to pay you for it. I just want you to help me. Got it? <laughs> so, you know, anybody who's in crisis, anyone who's like, in destitution, not has money, you know, of course, they're going to be more courting because they can't afford things, they can't pay for things. So what are they going to do? They're going to cord right in, right? Cord in, pull, 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 pull. So cords in that second chakra are inappropriate. The cording in, even that sexual energy, here's another thing, let's think about sexuality. Let's think about, oh, so someone's drawn to you, someone wants to be intimate with you, and they've got that sexual cord coming at you, Here's what ha can happen. This is what's messed up. Someone cords into you sexually. They're drawn to you. Okay. They want to they wanna be intimate with you. They're sexually drawn to you. Okay. They cord in. Now, normally you'd be feeling like you no know, attraction to that person. Well, once they cord in, it confuses you because now their energy is corded into you. What they're wanting is right in that second chakra. And now you're feeling drawn to this person. OK, sexually, and then you act out on it. And once the person's had that conquering, so to speak, oftentimes the cord will start to dissolve or it might, you know, sometimes it'll stay. But what happens is in time you start realizing, whoa, why did I do that? I'm not even attracted to this person. I don't even like this person. Here I am having sex with this person. OK, it's because of the cording. OK, this is like important for you to understand. You know, like you're meeting people, you know people and everything's cool. And all of a sudden you're feeling the sexual draw to this person. You might want to look to see if they're courting into you and it goes the other way. You might see somebody and you were like, whoa, I really want to be into me. I want to have sex with that person. You're the one now courting into somebody, causing them to feel some kind of attraction to you because you're courted in. OK, and now all of a sudden, OK, here it comes. Now they have sex and you have sex with that person. And then maybe now you realize, oh, that they're not really who I thought they were. Oh, I don't really like that about them. So the cord disconnects, disengages. You walk away. But, you know, now you've traumatized somebody and, and had somebody have sex with you that wasn't even interested in you. And now you're no longer interested in them. But that courting thing is what made it happen. OK, so people cords are potent, powerful. They confuse you. Okay, they make you do things <laughs> you wouldn't normally do because you don't know that the cord coming in is somebody else's emotional need, emotional energy frequency coming into you, and you don't know it. Okay, so that sexual, that second chakra, like I said, is all that sexual energy, the emotions, all that carryover. And then two, here's another piece that happens. You have past lives with people, okay? So in this lifetime, you come across many of the people that you've had past lives with. In fact, your primary uh, people in your world, like your parents, your lovers, your really, the really bonded part people in your life, you are gonna have a lot of past life stuff. So there can be courting happening coming from your past lives. In fact, courting happens like courting happens in past lives and then the body dies and then you reincarnate and then you connect those those cords don't always necessarily leave even with death. OK, so let's just say you die and then you're born again, you come into this world and then these other soul peoples that you, your soul family that you've been doing soul dancing with, you, you connect again at some age somewhere in your life. Oh, that recognition, the soul recognition Whatever, whatever was happening in that past life, you pick right up on it. it start, you start right there where you left off, so to speak. So again, oh, here comes the cord. Now you're confused and you don't know why you're feeling this energy towards somebody or with somebody. But it's like coming from a past connection. But they're, they're, the cording is still there. And people, it's really, it's a, the emotion. It's about the emotion. Okay, all of the carryover is emotional. If you didn't have the emotion, there would be no carryover. If you weren't having the emotional conflict, emotional angst, emotional pain, there would be nothing in this life for energies to hook into, to cord into. Not only that, but there would be no soul dancing because there's no wounding to connect into. 
Okay. I'm not saying we're going to be free of our wounding. What I am saying is wake up to what you're doing with your own courting. Think about people in your life right now. Who are you not telling the truth to? Okay. Who are you incapable of telling them what you need or what you want? Who are you not able to say, no, I don't want that. Or yes, I do want that. Okay. If you're not speaking truth, you're courting. This is important to realize. It's an emotional thing. It's coming from the subconscious. You're needing and wanting something. Those needs and wants aren't being met because of your wounding, because you're not capable of telling the truth and asking clearly what you want or what you don't want, speaking truth. So we do it in other ways. And courting is the way we do it. And we do it with many people. Okay, Even as a little kid, a child, they'll court into their mother or their father because they want attention or they want to be recognized or they want love or you know, whatever their wounding is, whatever they're not getting. And they're learning that you asking for what you want. You don't get what you want. Well, we're going to get it in other ways. Courting is how we get it. OK, because what happens is it confuses the person you're courting into. They feel that neediness. They feel that emotional energy coming from you. They don't know that that emotion is not them. They feel it thinking it is them, okay? It's me, I'm feeling this. Someone cords in, oh, I'm not recognizing it's a cord. I'm just feeling this emotion, thinking it's me, okay? So we act out on that kind of experience. We start acting out on that need. Now, sometimes we can get upset about it and like, I don't want to give you that, but we're still feeling it. So then we get angry at the person that we're feeling this angst with. Or feeling like I don't, you know, I can feel like this feeling like, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm supposed to, I feel like I want to do this or do that or feel this or have this experience. And another part is saying rebelling. No, no, no. Then we make that person wrong and punish them and hurt them. And all we need to do is disengage the cords. Okay. So, you know, releasing cords, you have to release those agreements because on some level you've agreed. You said, yes, court me. Okay. So just for example, people that are wanting from me that are sending all these little cords to me, I'm not agreeing to it. Stay, stay out. You don't belong here. Okay. So they, they're not able to actually just like hook in. Okay. But if I were in that wounded place, if I got to save people and protect people, you know, whatever those beliefs were once were, I don't, if I still had those and people would have something to hook into. Okay. It doesn't stop people from having needs and wants, but I'm no longer willing to do that the courting dance, you know, the court, the dance of chords, okay? Look into me and I'll take care of you. That ain't gonna happen, okay? I'm nobody's savior. So, you know, all those emotional angst that we have, doesn't matter, we could, it could, we could meet a stranger, you know, and that need to be loved is inside of everyone. You know, that desire and need, love me, love me, love me, I need love. You meet some stranger and you're courting into the stranger because, you know, they're not giving you what you need, but you want it. Okay, <laughs> so again, it's still all about clean up that wounding, but basically cords, courting into one another is not okay. The only place we really court should be able to, well, where we would cord, where it would be appropriate would be in the heart. Now with young children, yes, they need that cord with their mother. Okay, there's that umbilical cord frequency. There's that first, second shock recording that we cord into. But by the time a child is around five, if you notice, they start to lose the babiness, you know, like their body starts to change and they, they start changing. They're starting to become a little child. You know, the, the, that baby stuff is gone. So usually by that time, cords have come to an end. They start disintegrating, dissolving when the infant's no longer in that state of survival where it needs you to survive, meaning you know, feeding the baby, taking care of the baby, the, the kid starts to become a child, it starts to be able to do things. So the courting starts to uh, dissolve naturally, unless you've got other things happening where sometimes a, a mother, you know, the smothering mother, the mother worrying, frantically worrying, you know, all that intense energy with their child, all that emotional energy, second chakra, the mother can cord in, and keep you bound in some way because the mother's afraid of anything happening to you, trying to keep you safe, protecting you. That's what mothers do. They think you're gonna, they're gonna save you from your own self, save you from your soul's agreements that you're meant to have here. They can't save you from it, but they try. And courting is one way they do that, okay? Mother puts a cord into your second chakra, creates fear, fear. 
okay? Fear to go outside, fear to be around people, fear something bad's gonna happen, okay? So your mother could still have that cord in you and you could be 60 years old <laughs> and mom's still worried, okay? So cording into that second chakra is just not appropriate. And again, it isn't just, you know, sexual energy or desire, it's all of the emotions, you know? We cord into our kids, we cord into our lover, we cord into uh, our friends, we cord into one another. Again, it's that unspoken words, it's the emotional. So think about a mother, what is she, how much cording is she doing to her child? doesn't matter how old you are, it still happens. You can be a teenager. You could be going, getting married and the mother could still want to, you know, possess you, have power over you. I'm just seeing some energy frequencies, the things that moms often do with their son, especially with the son. I mean, I know my own mother, you know, when my brother brought a girlfriend home, my mother like gave her the third degree and basically pushed her out of my son, my brother's life. Okay. The mother was possessing him, owning him. And it messed him up severely. Okay, so how many mothers are doing that? If you're a mother, what are you doing to your kids? What are you doing to your son? Porting into him, trying to control him, trying to, you know, whatever that is, whatever fears you've got, concerns, worries, hopes, whatever. You know, it's like, what are you doing? Wake up. Okay, it's not appropriate. You mess people up. You affect people with cords. And people cording into you affect you big time. Okay, so this dancing, cord, cording into one another, that kind of soul dancing is totally inappropriate and it, it causes harm. It's destructive, painful, and it keeps people, miss, you know, kind of keeping them like unstable, like they can't tell what's their emotion and what's somebody else's. And even bigger than that is they don't even know that it's coming from somebody else. They're thinking it's them. I remember in my own life, younger in my life, I'd feeling all this stuff and I always thought it was me truly thought all these things were me it wasn't and this is kind of sad okay but it's like it wasn't until like you know like i've been doing this work healing work all this kind of stuff you know for almost 40 years okay so probably about 10 years ago is when i realized whoa this isn't me this is other people how shocking was that okay surprise surprise <laughs> so people courting inappropriate got it second chakra very inappropriate. That's they're hooking into your whole emotional center. You're hooking into other people's whole emotional center, their sexual energy frequency. Okay. We don't want cords in here. We got enough stuff to deal with on our own. We don't need to be confused or, you know, make it compounded more intense because other people are cording into us. Okay. So cording, 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 totally inappropriate. What's really cool is I have a chakra clearing series on clearing your chakras where I spend a full hour clearing out one chakra. Okay, so it's really awesome. People actually have a questionnaire, they fill out a questionnaire, and then I do all the clearing and healing on all the issues, which is really cool. So we've got like several, several times of that. So we got that chakra series where get those, get those cordings out, get that chakra cleaned out, release the traumas and all the crisis in there so that we're feeling much lighter, much freer, much better, more anchored in. And then we're not cording out to other people and we're not allowing all those cords to come in because we're no longer willing to do that cord soul dancing. Okay, so check it out on our website. We got cool stuff on the chakras. This is the second chakra. This is that cording, what we, you know, the court talking about cords and how that affects us. But, you know, the good news is, is we can clean up all of that energy. We can clean up the wounding. We can clean things up. So you're no longer cording back and forth, no longer allowing the cords to happen with you. Okay. So again, second chakra cording, mm -mm, not good. We don't want people cording into us. We don't want to be cording into others. We want clear energy, clear space. Let that chakra get healed. Yeah. And then remember, we, we, we can cord in from the heart, but not from that second chakra. Okay. Again, it's just an intense place, confuses us, makes us wonky, makes us afraid, insecure not how we want to live, okay? So if you can, take advantage of that chakra series and clean out that second chakra. All right, again, Bonnie Saratari, Spiritual Acceleration, here to help you get liberated.